Today we're going to take a look at the setup on the landed cost module, the, specifically the journey template and the void setup. There's, there's quite a few things that you do need to set up to get this going. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of roll through those individual items that need to be set up, all leading up to the journey template setup. And then kind of towards the end of the video, we'll walk through the voyage creation, and then I'll show you the order tracking piece and where all of those rules and things tie together. So let's go ahead and take a look at the setup and the example. All right, so let's start off and make sure that the features is enabled. Now, depending on the version you're on, if you don't see the landed cost module in the list, you may need to go over to feature management and turn it on. I'm in a version that's late enough now that uh, I don't actually have to turn it on, but I do have to enable it. So it's important to remember to enable it. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you're going to set this up is go into the landed cost parameters. And if you go down to feature visibility here, you'll see that there's an, there's an activate um, button here. So you want to make sure that you turn that on first, save it, you know, go to the home page, refresh, just make sure that, that you have, have it, the feature actually activated. All right. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go back into the landed cost module and you're going to set up the void statuses. We're going to need that in a minute in the parameter. So you want to go ahead and do that once you activate it. So go over here to void statuses and you want to set up your different statuses. So these are the different statuses that the voids could be in. So, you know, we've got created or goods in transit, arrived, cleared, at warehouse, just whatever statuses that you want to reflect on the actual voids that you want to go ahead and set up in here. And it does require you to put a parent. So, you know, uh, created goes to goods in transit and goods in transit goes into, you know, arrived. So there is a parent that need, has to be specified for each one of these subsequent ones. And then you also have to mark it whether or not you want to be able to modify or delete the voyage in that status there. So I've got all these checked is, is yes. All right. So once you get the, the statuses set up, then you want to go back into your, your landed cost parameters. So we kind of go into it once and then come out of it and come back into it. And in here, I won't go through all of these, but, but basically what you're wanting to do in the general section, you just want to make sure you have all your different journals set up, your movements, your different journal names here, transfers, all that kind of good stuff. And in here in the statuses, this is why we need to go ahead and do, go and do the statuses first. Go ahead and specify what status is in transit or costed or, or ready for costing, pre-costed, et cetera. Go ahead and set, set in those statuses. The other thing that you want to do is go ahead and get your number sequences generated. Make sure that you have number sequences here for, for all, all the number sequences available. All right, so that's ba that's the, the general setup. So let's go into more of the void setup. This would be the more specific setup here. So if we go ahead and we'll go first into, let's go ahead and look at our container types first. So that's gonna be under, um, all, it's still in the landed cost module under setup. And we'll go under container types. And basically what you're doing here are setting up the different types of containers and their volumes. So I've got a couple here that uh, this is all Contoso data. So this is all standard data. If you set up a trial environment, this is what we'll show. So there's uh, 20 foot, 40 foot, and then a less than container load that is that it's in here. Now, optionally on, on this, you can also set up containers themselves. If you remember from our, 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 our overview video, you can just type in containers, but if you can pre-set up containers if you want to. So if we go into shipping containers, this is where my pre-set up containers will be. So I can put in the container number and the, and the container type there. The next kind of thing we want to talk about is the shipping ports. So if we go under again, landed cost setup, and then this delivery information, shipping ports, these are going to be all your different shipping ports that are available to you. These are going to come in, into play when we set up our actual voyage template. So these are all the ones, again, this is just Contoso data, but um, so we've got New Zealand, Australia, Melbourne, Shanghai, Dallas, Long Beach, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this one is needed for the local, you'll have local um, activities and things on, on your uh, on your voyage template. So, so I've got this one just kind of as a generic. So once you get your shipping ports done, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the activities. So let's go under the multi-leg journey setup and then activities. And activities are different um, pieces of the voyage. Um, so you might have uh, some time in customs, you might have local transit uh, where it's on the sea, but these are basically, or load, you know, load's another one where you, you know, might, where it's being loaded. 
So just different activities that might happen on the voyage, you wanna go ahead and set, set those up for it. So once we get to the activity set up, we're gonna go into the legs. So that's again under the multi-leg journey set up and we're gonna go into legs. And these are the different legs of the journey. So this is kind of kind of co coincide with our activity codes. So we've got load, customs, local, and it's just saying from what port to port and, the, and their mode of delivery is what you're defining here on the, on the main page. So you've got, you know, this is where we're getting from port to port. And here when I'm using the load or the customs ones, this is where I'm, I'm just kind of specifying that uh, generic port there, that XXXNA on these, on these ones that aren't really to a specific port. Now, also within this, if I click in, the one we're going to use here today is at Shanghai to Long Beach. If I go into the tracking control center here, uh, there's a couple of create types that, that are set up. There's some that are specifically set on these different um, legs. So one of them might be lead time. So when it's calculating the, the date for the PO, what, what it does is look at the lead time here in this table. So what we're doing is we're saying you've got a source table and a target table. So we're saying the source container is a shipping container, the start date, and then it's going to go into the shipping container um, estimated end date. Uh, the mode of delivery if it's 40, goes from Shanghai to Long Beach, the activity is sale. And the lead time for that is going to be 24 days. And we'll see that in a minute in the example. I'll run through the example. But it's basically going to set an estimated end date at 24 days. So this is where you basically are saying, how many days is it going to take to get it from port to port? Or how many days is it going to take it to get loaded, right? So if we come back out here to the load step, go into the tracking control center, again, go ahead and select my lead time. And so the load lead time here is one day, all right? So another thing that, that, that we can set on the, on the leg are status updates. So if I go to the status update, remember we're on the load time. So once we, you know, we've got a source table and a source field here. So once the actual end date is set, so we put in the actual end date, it's going to change the voyage status to goods in transit, this 20 goods in transit here, all right? So again, if we go and take a look, let me back out of this for a second. We'll go into one of these journey the, from a port to port, go into the tracking control center and look at the uh, status update on that one. So in on this one, once we set an actual end date here, it's gonna basically say arrived at port because we're actually putting in arrived at port there. Get out of that there. So that's the leg set up. And now if we go into the tracking control center, we were getting to the tracking control center through the legs, but there's a couple of things that you wanna set up that's outside of the legs. So if we go to the tracking control center here, we're setting up rules for, I'll choose this one here. So we, again, we, this is the same screen we're just looking at, but you know, we have a source table and source field, target table and target field. So what we're saying is when we set an estimated end date on the purchase order line, we're gonna set a confirmed delivery date field. Okay, so basically it's going to copy the estimated end date on our, our tracking from our voyage over to the confirmed delivery date on our purchase order. So that's how that confirmed delivery date field actually gets set there. Okay, so just a kind of this one's kind of outside of those legs. Now, if we tie all that together, the next thing we're going to go ahead and set up is the journey template. Okay, so again, we're in Atlantic cost set up in this multi-leg journey set up. Then we're going to go over to the journey template. The one we're going to use today is this Shanghai, China to Long Beach. So let's take a look at that one. So what we've done on this one is we've added our different legs. So we're on, on that one, when we create this voyage, we should see load and then we should see it on the sea traveling from port to port. Then it's going to go into customs and then you have the local transport set up there, right? So in here, you've got this generic port. This is the only line that's got the, the actual from port to port here. Mode of delivery is 40 and it's saying journey from port and to port. So we've, we've got that template set up. So this is what kind of ties everything together. You can get into the tracking control centers from here, here as well if you, if you need to. The last little piece of setup that we want to do is take a look at the warehouse setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, inventory management and then we'll go into uh, inventory breakdown and then warehouses. And I'll show you the example for Warehouse 11. That's the one we'll be doing the demo in today. But um, uh, 
you, the same set will be done for basic or advanced warehouses. So if we go into look at warehouse 11, notice that, you know, you've got the normal quarantine and transit warehouse, but now you've got these goods in transit warehouse and under delivery warehouses. Okay. So I've created two additional warehouses, a, a GIT warehouse, a goods and transit and a an UND, which is under delivery. And you, it's just a new type this in, in the warehouse management. So you want to create a goods and transit warehouse type goods and transit, and then a type under delivery. This is for, you know, under delivery of purchase orders. Um, and then you also want to, on these warehouses, use the same location for the receipt and issue locations. So on site 11, uh, I've got default receipt as 11 and default issue as 11. Uh, you want to make these the same in your uh, goods and transit and under delivery warehouses. So they'll, they'll match up. Uh, you'll, you'll actually have problems if you don't set those up to be the same. Um, so that'll be the, the final little piece of setup here for us today. So let's go ahead and, and let's, let's create another voyage and kind of see where that's all coming from. I went ahead and created a purchase order 151 for a thousand of our A0001. So let's go ahead and create a journey for that. So I'm going to go back into my landing cost module, go to, or let's create a voyage for that, I should say, and go into all voyages. And we're going to go in and do new and we'll put a, a voyage description. We'll say demo five and we'll put in our vessel. Again, we can choose from a list or we can, we can type it in if we want to. And then today we're just going to look at the journey template. And this was our Shanghai to Long Beach one there. So we're going to do that one. Go ahead and say, okay. Hey guys, this is uh, Scott from the future. Um, I was editing this video and I realized I missed a pretty important p point here, which is you may be wondering when I go to the voyages screen, how it, are the POs showing up on the voyage screen or why aren't all the POs showing up on there? And that's actually controlled by the delivery terms. So if we go into the vendor and look at the delivery terms that are assigned to the, to the one I was using, which is this FOB term, if I click on that, there's actually a flag that we need to set and make sure it's set for goods and transit management, which is this one right here. So as long as you have that one set, that's going to mark the delivery terms as a goods and transit order. Um, so then it'll show up in your landed cost when you're creating your voyage. All right. A pretty important point. Just missed it in the initial video. All right, so we're going to go and add our, our PO line. Is our, there's our 151 PO. We're going to add that to our staging list. Then we'll go ahead and go to the view staging list. And we're going to go ahead and add that to a container. And I'll pick it, I'll just type in a container. Container one. And we'll go ahead and put in a type here. And go ahead and say OK. So now we have our voyage complete setup completed. So let's go back out and just kind of take a look at, at um, what we did there from our template. So this is the voyage we just set up, this demo five, voyage six. So if we go ahead and take a look at it, the main thing I want to show you is the tracking features based on those rules. So if we look at our purchase order right now, we we'll go to this delivery tab. Notice I'll go ahead and just hit refresh just to show you. There is no confirmed delivery date on there. And so the way we, we kind of get those dates going, if we go under the general tab of the voyage, we're going to go under tracking. And here's, if you remember from our template, let me go ahead and duplicate this tab here and we'll open up the voyage template again. So I'm just going to go back to well, the landed cost module and we'll go and look at the journey template. And this is the template we're using. So again, so our legs are going to match. So we got load, the, the port to port, customs and locals. So that's where these lines are coming from. Load, customs, local, right? So to kick this off, let's go ahead and put in a start date here. So let's say that this is going to, this journey, this is expected to be loaded on the, uh, let's say on September 1st. And we'll save that. And we'll notice that all of our experience estimated dates fill in. So these dates and these estimated days are coming from our tracking center. So if, again, if we go back and look at our load, for example, and go look at the tracking control center for the load, and we're looking at the lead time now, so we go to lead time. So we've got one day here. And again, so if we go back and look at our voyage, that's where this one is coming from. So if we can, we can do the same thing on this, on this port to port transit here. So let me close this out. And here's our port to port. Go look at our tracking control center and look at the lead time. We've got 24 there. So that's where the 24 days is coming from. So it's, it's taking the start date here that I entered. It's adding a day to come up with 9-2 because that's our estimated date. And then it takes 9-2 for the 
port for the voyage and adds 24 days to come to 926 so it comes all the way through and calculates the end date. So now if we go look at our purchase order and just hit refresh, when we look at our, our confirmed delivery date down there, we see that it's 10-1, which matches our 10-1 here, right? So the reason why it's copying our estimated end date, again, if we go look at our tracking control center, um, let me go, go actually to the tracking control center there. And then we look at the crate type of blank for a purchase order. So it's taking the estimated end date and copying that to the confirmed delivery date. So what it does is whatever this last estimated end date is down here, doesn't matter how many legs you have, um, it's going to take that last estimated end date and it's going to copy it into the confirmed delivery date. All right, so the other thing that we can do, the other rules that we have there are, if you remember, let me go and change the, I'm back into the tracking control center. If I go and look at the status update, so we've got different status updates. So basically when the load activity gets an actual end date, it's gonna change the void status to goods in transit. So let's take a look at that. So the actual end date is here. And so we're, we're estimating it, it's gonna end on 9-2. Let's just say that they got it done early and it actually ended on 9-1. So if we go ahead and change that to 9-1 and hit save, notice all the dates are gonna change. So this rolls back to 9-30 and it's changing this actual dates to actual days to zero because it, it was, we thought it was going to take one, but they got it loaded the same day. And then if we take a look at the purchase order, the uh, con confirmed delivery date updates to 930. And then if we go in and take a look at our status, so if we close this screen here and just refresh the voyage, notice our status goes to goods in transit. So we've got the status rules here are where we have on the tracking control center control that. So if we take a look at our, our customs or let's see if we can find one of the other ones here, our sales here. So if when we change it to basically an actual date on the sales, it's gonna change the voyage status to arrive. So let's take a look at that for just one more example. So if we go back into our tracking inquiry here and put an actual end date on this sale, let's go ahead and do an edit. And let's say instead of 925, Let's say they get it in on, I don't know, 922. We'll save that and we'll notice the dates will recalculate. Get an actual days of 21 here. This re this calculates to 927. So if we go ahead and take a look at the purchase order here, refresh that, we'll see our confirmed date goes to 927. And then if we close our screen and then hit refresh, we'll notice that the void status goes to arrive. So the tracking control center kind of sets up the rules for what you want to happen. If anything we looked at today confuses you, go ahead and take a look here at the video that I'm posting about the overview I did that last week. And that kind of walks through the entire process of the landed cost module. And I think you'll understand more of what we did on the setup today. Okay, so I hope you found some value in this. Next week, we're gonna take a look at the billing side of the things, where, where the costs come from on the setup for that. So I'll see you next Thursday. Thanks, see ya.